Nope is the biggest release of the week, and I'd say out of everything that's come out this past year, probably second to the Batman, I love the fact that we have another IMAX movie, a true cinema movie, to go back into theaters for. And, uh, dude, I've caught it four times. I don't. <laughs> I think you've caught it twice. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it's a true spectacle. And even so, it's about spectacle itself. So definitely a great reason to go back to the movie theater again and again. Uh, yeah, and as you mentioned, we've both been on journeys. You to your closest IMAX screen, which is unfortunately a, a road Too trip far. away. Too and uh, me, I back from Chicago, where you so gracefully hosted me over the past week. Uh, and we got to do some fun stuff, including see Nope together. And we recorded our in-person review, which, as you mentioned, you can check out on our channel, where we get into our full non-spoilery thoughts. We will get full spoilery thoughts in our live stream following weekend must watch. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, we want to talk, touch on it a little bit. But, you know, just... Going to, like, the swag we picked up in Chicago, I was oh. able to get that, like, cool kind of nope uh, smiley face, and we picked up posters, and oh. you took me to uh, The Brood, the David Cronenberg and horror-themed coffee shop out there next to, uh, what well, I forget the name of the record store that had all that awesome stuff, picked up the- The this, Brood like, record store. Yeah, it, this hey. Iron Giant figure, oh, which is really cool. Oh, baby, let's go. Yeah, yeah, so we got Hold Matching on, let me, Giants. Let me, let me get you on the full screen right there. Show the people on the full screen. Uh. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that's beautiful. It was a cool record store, yeah. Now I'm, I'm glad you were able to make it out here. I mean, I live here, and for the most part, I've never been to Pitchfork. So this man took me to Pitchfork. Yeah. We got to see the roots out there. You know, keep it movie based. Mm. Oscar winner. Questlove. Questlove was on there. the drums. <laughs> he killed it, bro. Oh. It was it was fantastic. It was keeping it movies related. They were they were playing uh, running up that hill. <laughs> yeah, we cannot escape that no matter where we go. But no, nah, it was it was an awesome weekend. So now we're back, back 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 to the being separated. But nonetheless, at least we have good movies to talk yeah, about. Yeah, plenty today. of interesting stuff to talk about. Uh, let's kick it off with the weekend must watch and get a little bit briefly into the big theatrical release of the weekend. As you mentioned, the latest from Jordan Peele. Nope. It is, uh, the third Jordan Peele movie and the third one to finish number one at the box office. Uh, the highest grossing art movie from an original script since... Us, so don't say it. Oh, uh, sorry, okay. I, I couldn't give you that impromptu quiz, but yeah, it's it's Jordan Peele competing against Jordan Peele at this point. He's a a genre wow. all to himself. So uh, I I want to ask, what is your reaction to the reaction to Nope thus far? I was thinking about my reaction to the reaction and how I would react exactly. And uh, what better position to be in? You know, there's a line in the movie with keeping it very cryptic. Uh, where the father figure says, we've already made it, just execute. And I feel like it's Jordan talking to himself. He's in this very interesting point where after three movies, after the first one gets you an Oscar, where do you mm -hmm. go from there? And I know he's talked a lot about No being the movie that he couldn't have filmed five years ago. And I think he means that in like a dozen mm -hmm. different ways. If he hadn't gone through the success of Get Out and Us, I don't think he puts a lot of the themes that he does in Nope, especially when it comes to the idea of it being a movie about movies. Um, I wouldn't have it any other way. We always talk about that box set, you know? At the end of his career, what looks better than seeing a Get Out, Us, Nope, all original projects? I've been telling Zach it's going to be a Nope 2. One I'll of them is going to get I'll a I'll believe sequel. it when I see it. I don't mind it as long as it's his own sequel, but I love that he's invested in himself. I don't think there's any better way to go. There's a lot of homages in this movie that uh, were actually pitched to him. Uh, obviously, every director that's on the rise gets pitched a Marvel movie, some IP, and he has practically said, I, as much as I love anime and all that stuff, will never take an IP because I will not be able to make it what I want to make it. And I can at least say, with all three of these, they're Jordan Peele films. Even with what he homages, it's not going to be like Stranger Things where 10 years down the line, they just go back to Spielberg. They will go back to Nope, uh, to get out to us. And regardless of what it homaged, he interpolates it in a way where he makes it mm -hmm. something very unique. And uh, Yeah, I mean, I, I think it. one of the big differences between Get Out and Nope is that Get Out is a movie that is very kind of like clean in terms of the the message that it's giving you, right? Like it's, it's not... Th they're 
while there is room to interpolate aspects of the plot, the over idea of Get Out is one that is a little bit hard to deny, right? Like the you you get the themes of of racism and of Great exploitation one. and of uh, of appropriation, and it, it's almost like hard to watch the movie and not see all that. With Nope, he's become a little bit more obfuscated in his approach. He's he's a little bit less uh, didactic about the, what he's trying to tell you. And mm-hmm. he's become a really, really interesting filmmaker in terms of the way that he... Uh, puts together a set piece, the spectacle he's able to put on the big screen. I, while I don't think that I like Nope as much as I like Get Out, I think that it's also a movie that like really, really rewards pulling it apart, talking about it, thinking about it, and and, and like it's almost I don't know. I, I see why some people are bumping up against some of the things in Nope, uh, but I also think that if your reaction to the movie is like why was that part with the animal in it then like you're you're not watching the movie really you're not like reading the text that's in the on the screen i say give it another chance for that because i agree with you dude and i know we said that get out is number one and i do still think it's number one but damn nope is way closer than i thought Mm. it was after my repeated viewings there are things just right off the bat that you are catching on a rewatch and you only get it on a rewatch that's what makes get out so good you're rewatching that movie and noticing things when they get pulled over that you're like completely different context there are just shots no dialogue in this movie that makes you go that's what that means then you're hearing someone say something now that you know their uh ending motivations or what they were going for uh different things just just you know, depending on what perspective you may have in the film industry, depending if you have siblings, because uh, I would say that's a big part of this movie that a lot of people aren't expecting. Um, depending on how many sci-fis you've watched in your life, the way that he's able to flip on them, I think, is done really well. But I've seen a lot of people go into this very disappointed it's a horror movie, dude. So I think for a lot of people who may know his stuff from Get Out or Us, where mm-hmm. it is really creepy, this is more of an epic sci-fi movie. Like, it is, it is 100% an alien adventure type film that then becomes like this family drama with siblings Mm -hmm. about like the film industry. And then it's sprinkled with horror. So I, I I will say that if you're going into this thinking that it's like a horror film, I can see you being disappointed, but I don't think that should be the approach that you take. Um, because it's 100% an alien movie. I think that's what he's serving up for you. Um, and I like to see that. I like to see the way yeah. that he's been blending genres because a big part of it is to not be in a checkbox. And that's one thing that he's been trying to dismantle with it. But go into it knowing that it's a lot like Close Encounters. I rewatched Close Encounters recently because I know mm-hmm. he said that was the biggest inspiration for him. And seeing that that movie isn't just like aliens, but oh my gosh, this dramatic mm-hmm. life that I have at home with my children and my children don't see me as a man. We were okay with that back in the 70s. I'm loving it right now in the 2020s because what he's able to include into this movie, I think in like a decade from now, we'll be able to rewatch it distance from it. And I think pick up a lot more things. Uh, and I just want to talk spoilers yeah. to you, man. I, I'm trying to like bounce yeah. around without getting too much into it, but I, I definitely give this movie a chance. And if you can give it multiple watches because it's one that rewards you every single time, just like his previous movies.